I also read with expression. Whenever there are different characters in the story, they have to give each character a voice. Whether there's a dog, the puss, the fowl, the snake, <laughs> even the wind, you have to imitate that so they, 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 have, they have a literal feel of mm -hmm. what's inside the book. The name of the story is Serving Joe Lewis. I focus basically on students, little children, because I believe that it's a good foundation for them to learn reading from very early. Once mm -hmm. you get that started, then the sky's the limit. They can do well in basic school, they can do well in high school, they can, they can move on from there. And it's not just about just reading. Whenever I read, I read and interact with my students. We're using pictures for those. Um, books with pictures and for those books without pictures and I ask them questions and you know pinpoint them I said why do you think this happened or why you know that sort of thing so you prick their 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 minds and then they will start telling you what they feel I also read with expression whenever there are different characters in the story they have to give each character a voice whether there's a dog the puss the fowl the snake <laughs> even the wind you have to imitate that so they 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 have they have a literal feel of what's inside the book. So when you read like that to them and they start reading, it's like they're listening for those expressions. Because what I did years ago, when I had my first son, my first child, um, in order to keep him quiet, I had to buy books. So when he's using a bottle or whatever, I take out a book and I read. I use the the pictures as well so he would be like from the book to my face to my mouth it's like she's really talking something about the book and so he's connecting the dots right there but anytime I'm finished reading the book he's like the book clock no 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 I start creating excitement he in the wants book. Back, he wants you to read again yeah so I realized that and I what I didn't realize was you're on a bus sitting down and other passengers are there they're listening and they're like, nobody's talking. And I didn't know that I had an audience back then, even whenever I get an opportunity. And that was when you're interacting with your child. In, yeah, even though he was like months old, almost, almost a year old. And I remember one day, this is something that I will never forget. One morning, I was not in a good mood. <laughs> me never in a story, me never in a not telling him anything about the trees or everywhere we pass normally with say something. I was not in the mood and I didn't realize that the child was saying these things back to me until we reached the embassy where they had this big poster called Alpo dog thing. And before we got to the bus stop it's like he preempted me and he was saying dog woo woo dog woo woo and when the bus stopped at the the bus stop and then I hear him like dog woo woo and like oh my god you were listening all this time and I got so excited like the mood just went and like okay okay guess what I'm gonna buy every book that I can buy for you I think I had lost my job at that time and we had to move to another place and in order to get the child settled in school I had to stay back go there early in the morning with his breakfast and read to him that also created an audience with the school. So every morning, come, Auntie Christine is going to read stories. Come, come, come. So they had their breakfast and they had their stories. And there were times when I couldn't stay back. So you know what my son did? He went into the principal's library, took out a book. He sat on the desk and he was there, picture reading out, heck. And the kids were like, yes. And he gave the characters a voice and their, the teacher said to me the next time, Christine, good my goodness, your child is reading pictures and he's giving them voices and all of that. And I was like, that is good. And if you can get your own children to do that at an early age, and when you feel so they can't read, then you start act like the idiot and say, I don't know what that is. And my, ch my children said to me, mommy, every time you see these open and close quotation marks, you're supposed to give it a voice. I'm like, okay, they're learning. So I think once this 
habit is, is um, fostered in the homes mm -hmm. and in the schools, especially before they get out there in school, in the school, they need to have a relationship with the physical books because the, the, the computers are nice and all of that. But let them get comfortable in a book. It's also important that if they don't understand something, they learn what the word means, do their research, and that will help them even more. It's not everybody likes to read, especially some of our boys, and we want to get our boys more involved in reading and create, have that creative process going. When he reached the tree, he was out of breath. He looked up at the silent cage. It was still too dark to see inside the cage. Can anybody see the cage? Yeah. Can you see the cage? Yeah. You can see it over here? Yeah. You can't see it? Can you see it now? Yes, I can. I still come show you. But this is very, very exciting. I saw how the children were responding to you. They were fully engaged. Yes. You could see from time to time, they were so excited about what was happening that they wanted to get close to you. They actually got up out of their seats and they came close and, and wanted to sort of interact one-on-one -on -one with you. Yes. So it's, it appeared to me as if you really have mastered the art of interacting with, with youngsters and you know getting them to come out of their shell, even the shy ones. Yes, I do. And even though, even though we have little children, before the pandemic hit, we usually go out to different schools, like high schools and stuff like that. And what we did was, whenever I'm reading, I invite them to come and read along with me. So each person would get a little piece, or a paragraph, and they would read. So even if they're shy, I said, okay, don't be shy. I'm right here beside you, right? And I would help them along to build that confidence and read, and then everybody gets a chance. I remember going to this prep school down the road, and I said, anybody wants to read to me? You want to see the line that came up, everybody. And I'm talking a lot of boys and girls, mm -hmm. and they were reading. I think that, that is something that we really, really need to, to help them with. So it's fun stories, it's um, magical stories, and it's fact factual stories. Because all of that ties into the whole creative process of who we are and where we're going from here. Finally, the holiday approaches, the holiday, the celebrations and all that kind of stuff. Are you thinking of, for example, engaging the students before they go off on holiday, you know, sensitizing them about, you know, the celebration, the period of time that it is and... Yes, no. definitely, definitely. I'm open to going to schools and I'm open to sponsors sending me to these schools, not just the schools, but other institutions that they want to kind of liven the system, you know, the, 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 the whole ambience and stuff. We have history. We ha also have a friend who's very good at history, where we, once we have a conversation about a particular subject, I write stories, I tailor make my stories towards these things. We have the Taino experience, we have a lot of other stuff that are out there which I, which I think our kids need to learn more about, not just the symbols, but the story behind the symbols. And I think that's a great idea to continue with. Thank you for reading the story for us. Hold on. Oh, my God.